With GPU prices having finally come down, a lot of people might be thinking about, now I could actually afford that high-end GPU. Maybe I can get that RTX 3080, something like that. But you still have an older system. Now, I was actually in exactly this situation about a year ago when I upgraded, and that's actually the, um, the test system that I'm using in this video, is my mid-range PC from 2019 with an RTX 3080 thrown in up against my current like 4K editing slash high-end gaming PC. And so the actual specs we're gonna be looking at here um, are in the older mid-range PC, I've got an i5-9600K, which I'm just running at its stock settings. I didn't overclock it for this video, although I've done overclock in the, on that uh, CPU in the past a long time ago. Now that's a six core, six thread CPU. Now that matters, especially the fact that it only goes up to six threads. They did not enable hyper threading in this generation of i5s. Um, but what matters even more than that is just that compared to a modern CPU like the 5950X I'm using here, or even like the Intel 12th gen especially, the single thread performance is lower and a lot of times that will cap you in uh, your, your gaming performance. If a thread you know, just gets maxed out, that's as fast as your game can go. Also, I'm using my 16 gigabytes of 3000 CL15 RAM in that system. Whereas on my high-end system here, we have the R95950X, which is a 16 core 32 thread chip, um, along with just each core being significantly faster than the uh, cores on the i5-9600K, as well as 32 gigabytes of faster RAM. This is 3600 CL16 RAM. So we're not just comparing the CPUs here. What we're really comparing is, if you stick a high-end GPU into an older mid-range PC, how does that compare to actually building a high-end current PC? What's your overall performance? Now there's some advantages and disadvantages to this, which is like, if I had matched the RAM or something like that, maybe we'd know how much it was just the CPU limiting it, or we could just look at 16 gigabytes of RAM versus 32. Uh, but I'm, I'm wanting to look at this more holistically as a entire like, do you keep the old mid-range or do you grab a, a new one? What's gonna be the difference between the two? Is it gonna like over double your frame rate as the carefully selected screenshot behind me might imply? Well, this is kind of a worst case scenario that, that I saw while I was benchmarking. Um, but uh, oh, your overall experience is gonna depend a lot based on the resolution, the settings, the types of games you play. Let's jump into some of these benchmarks and then I'll give you some final thoughts at the end. So we're gonna start out at maximum settings at 4K and that's gonna really minimize the difference of the CPUs and overall systems here. And, and that, this is kind of intentional because I think a lot of people get confused by the, um, the whole like CPU limited, GPU limited situation and things like that. Really what it is, is that most graphic settings and especially the resolution in a game don't change the CPU impact a lot. So if you turn up the settings and the resolution high enough, you're mostly GPU limited and that means that the rest of the system, the RAM, the CPU, and all of that aren't having much impact on the actual frame rate and experience that you're getting here, which is what we see here. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't see any performance difference here, although the one or two FPS difference that we see in a few scenes here, my guess is that might have to do with the fact that I can use resizable bar on the newer platform, whereas the older platform does not have resizable bar support. And so the tiny difference that we saw could be attributable to that. Now, if we go down to 1080p, we're still at ultra settings, although I don't have ray tracing enabled, but if we go down to 1080p ultra, now we are instantly seeing a significant performance difference between the two GPUs. Um, although the exact difference between the two is gonna vary depending on how CPU demanding the scene is that we're looking at. Now, both CPUs are actually delivering good performance here so far, but as we get out into this open city environment, and this will happen in a lot of open world titles, uh, you'll become more CPU constrained as you get into the larger open areas with more AI and traffic and all sorts of things going on. So keep your eye here as we cross this street and get out into this town square and watch as the uh, the performance dip here is just massive. We actually dipped below 60 FPS for a second 
on the older system, whereas the newer system uh, just felt way smoother, much more high refresh rate. So even though the overall average performance here isn't isn't as far apart as you might think there there's scenes where the exact difference is huge now here at 1440p ultra we're actually a lot more uh a lot more gpu limited than than you might think even on a 3080 but we do still see a couple fps difference again i think that small couple percent difference here uh again i might attribute to these um resizable bar support but that may or may not be the case. Um, but as again, we get out into the open world, we're gonna start seeing the the split again between the two systems. So the, uh, the CPU demand goes up and we start to see a, a bit of a tank in performance here once again as we cross the street. This, at least in the benchmark section of this game, is one of the hardest places for the CPU. And right here, once again, we're dipping to around 50 FPS on the left-hand side of our screen. So really, you know, it, it's interesting to think about uh, what kind of a, uh, you know, what, what kind of games you're playing, what kind of settings you're using. That has a lot to do with how much you will feel these differences. Now, if we do ray tracing, I was really curious what would happen because ray tracing actually increases the CPU demand. Although it more, it has a larger increase to the GPU demand. Although I did enable DLSS quality in order to at least stay around 60 FPS most of the time. Uh, although we see what we do even dip below that. I mean, the, the ray tracing ultra settings in this game are incredibly demanding, even for a 3080, uh, even using DLSS. Um, but again, I was really interested to see what would happen in the more CPU intensive areas with ray tracing enabled because uh, because I think we're actually going to get more CPU limited on the left hand side despite the fact that the ray tracing is increasing the GPU limit a lot more than um, you know with the normal ultra now right there we ah, I saw it dip to at least 48 FPS and it seems like we're extending that 50 FPS or so dip uh, way beyond what we saw without ray tracing. So I was correct there. It, it seems like the CPU got really stressed during that section. So only a 5 FPS average difference here, but we're, we saw a much larger difference. Now, what I'm checking here is both sides of the screen are actually the low-end system now, but I have ray tracing on on the left and no ray tracing on the right, and I wanted to compare the lows here so we could watch as we get CPU limited. I think we get back up to 60 FPS and above a lot quicker on the right hand side. So I really do think it's a ray tracing issue that, that's increasing the CPU demand through that scene. Um, so yeah, anyway, a large difference there. Um, so that was low end versus low end, but we're back to the you know low end versus high end here. But we're back to 4K settings, but this time instead of just maxing out 4K Ultra, I went with realistic settings you might actually play the game at. So 4K high with DLSS quality looks very good and the performance gets very playable. I was curious basically here on if somebody has an older CPU like this, like an i5-9600K, and you're looking to upgrade to 4K, do you need to upgrade your whole system or could you just upgrade your monitor and your video card? In other words, at realistic 4K settings, how limited do you actually get? Also note, I'm curious that if going down to the high settings will reduce some of the CPU demand as we go through this more difficult section as we cross the street here. So this is kind of the moment of truth as we go through this section here. How bad is the CPU limit? It actually, you know, again, it's certainly better performance on the right hand side, but by going down to those high settings, it seems to have relieved a little bit of the CPU bottleneck and we stayed over 60 FPS. And I don't think you would have felt that too badly uh, when actually playing the game, which is nice to see. But let's switch to a different game. So this is Red Dead Redemption 2. And actually this section of the benchmark, because you're kind of in this town here, I think there's a lot of AI or something happening because you can get very CPU limited in this scene. So we, we only see a small FPS gain on the high-end system here at 4K, but this is 4K max settings. So, uh, you know, as we go down to lower resolutions, that'll be interesting to look at. But I wanted to look at another scene here. 
where we're in this interior setting, there's a bit of a CPU limit. Again, you can look at the GPU usage percent. You can see that it's down around 91%, 92% on the left-hand side, whereas we see it closer to 95, 96% on the right-hand side. So that's a good way to tell whether you're CPU limited is looking at those GPU usage percentages. The CPU usage can kind of hide it. I'm showing all of the cores and threads on the six core CPU. The screen would be too messy if I showed all 32 threads on the, <laughs> on the uh, 5950. Um, anyway, going down to 1440p, now you see a massive difference. Uh, we can see that this, um, this scene really hasn't gained any performance on the low end system by going down to 1440p. We're at basically the same FPS we were at 4K because of that CPU limited situation. Whereas on the higher end system, we're able to stretch our legs up into the mid 90 FPS range throughout that scene. Now, as we jump into this scene, we're definitely, again, extremely CPU limited, although we're at least reaching a higher FPS experience here uh, on, on the low end system than we did in that other scene. <laughs> we're at least able to get into the 80s and 90s, because honestly, if you can get into the 80s and 90s, you're not gonna really mind your performance too badly. Although we see as we dipped in here, we actually saw it bottom out around 60 FPS for a second here. So I think that's one of the big takeaways is that a lot of the differences are in your, your minimum frame rates and, and how you'll kind of get those stutters down as your CPU starts chugging. Now going down to 1080p is of course going to even further accentuate the issue um, with us down here all the way. Uh, you know, <laughs> 1080p, it is max settings, but we can see we're able to get, uh, you know, 120 FPS or more most of the time on the high end system, whereas we're dipped down into the 70 FPS range on here. So, I mean, moral of the story, you put a, would have, uh, I think, already known this, but definitely don't buy a 3080 for 1080p on a low end CPU. <laughs> now, for some of my, you know, further thoughts on this whole topic, uh, why don't we pop back out here? and I'll give a little bit of a wrap up. Okay, I actually have a lot of final thoughts about this situation. If you wanna take this question as like, okay, should I take my mid-range PC that has similar to specs to what we've seen here and get that 3080, is that a waste? Well, when I did it, now when I actually did my original upgrade, it was to a 6800 XT, which is kind of the AMD equivalent to the 3080, because at the time a year ago, the pricing was much better on that. Currently, I mean, you can watch my current videos comparing those two, but the point was going up to a high-end GPU. Now, why did I do it though? Um, well, I moved to a 4K screen, or at least I wanted to. So I think that's the big thing. If you have this kind of mid-range PC from a CPU and RAM standpoint, and maybe currently you're gaming at 1080p or 1440p, but you're interested in moving to 4K when you upgrade your GPU, then I actually think that you could be okay keeping this system. Now we certainly saw times where the performance is significantly worse, even at 4K, but those blips are a lot less noticeable. And again, I can speak to this a lot more with personal experience because I literally did this and I, I gamed with that CPU setup uh, for at least a month or two before I built my, uh, my high-end PC to go along with the GPU upgrade. And to be honest, gaming at 4K at near maximum settings where I was targeting 4K 60 FPS, I was perfectly happy because this kind of older mid-range CPU is capable of, for the most part, delivering about 60 FPS. And honestly, in a lot of games, it can do a lot better. As single player titles go, the, the games I chose here, especially in their dense city environments, are some of the more CPU demanding games that I, that I generally benchmark. I mean, I haven't tested every game, but th that's why I selected them here. Um, whereas a lot of other games are nowhere near this CPU limited. However, there are you know a lot of people who might be considering this for like a esports kind of focus, and they're yelling at me for testing single player games and all of that. And I will say that in esports games, especially if you turn down settings, you're a lot more likely to end up being CPU limited. In which case, there's a good chance that you're wasting a lot of the potential of the high end GPU um, if that's the case. So, I guess I guess what we'll we'll uh, say from all of this is that if you have the budget, upgrade the full system. It's definitely noticeable. 
even if you're shooting for 4K. But if buying the 4K screen and the high-end GPU is all you can afford, and you're wondering, would it be a complete waste to do that now before you can upgrade the rest of the system? I don't think it's complete waste. And then with new CPU generation coming out towards the end of this year, um, maybe that would be a good time then, you know, or even waiting till those start to get discounts and things like that. Maybe, you know, a year from now or so, or six months from now, maybe you build a high-end platform to then port your GPU into. However, if, it, if we're down at 1440p or 1080p and you're planning on sticking to that resolution and you're on a system similar to what I showed here with the uh, i5-9600K, um, I, I really feel like it was... It, it's a bit of a stretch. Like you're you're wasting a lot of the GPU potential, and it, I'm not saying you shouldn't upgrade the GPU, but maybe go to something a little bit more conservative than the RTX 3080. Now, some of you are probably hoping that I'll now benchmark a whole bunch of GPUs on the 9600K and find its perfect match, and maybe that could be something I could do in the future when I have a lot more free time. Um, but what I've had a lot of viewers on my channel since I've actually mentioned this. I do this channel as a hobby. It started to take off to where I'm getting a lot more views than I used to, but I don't do this full-time. I'm a full-time high school math teacher um, who, who does this for fun <laughs> um, in, in some amount of free time that I have, although during the summer I do have a lot more free time. That's why I've been able to do a lot more of these big head-to-head -head benchmarks and things like that. We'll see what happens when the school year starts back up. Anyway, um, I just didn't have time to test out a bunch more games or a bunch more GPUs for this particular video. Anyway, let me, let me know other stuff you'd be interested in seeing me test in the comment section. I can't guarantee I'll have time to do all of it, um, but, I, but it all is, uh, a lot of my content ideas do come from comments that I see on the channel. Anyway, I hope all of you have an excellent day and found this video interesting and or helpful or maybe, you know, maybe both. <laughs> have an excellent day.